Nah, I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, Rainer Canizia's Lost Cities. Also known as Rim Cheats. The main bit is this game called Lost Cities. So Lost Cities is old, a- old, old Rainer Canizia game that we just like knew about. Well, I played it. I knew I had played it in the past with people. I knew this game. I knew it was a great two-player game. But Rim had never played it. And I've the seen other people play it. I just kind of ignored it. In fact, I owned it and didn't realize I owned it. Right. We the found other it day, in my closet. the other day, it's like, hey, let's just play a two-people game. So I go over to the closet. We're looking. And I see Lost Cities in there. I'm like, hey, I haven't played Lost Cities in a couple of years. That game's an amazing two-player game. Let's play that. And Rim hadn't played it, and he owned it. So we took it out. I reread the rules, and we played. And we've been playing it a whole bunch because we remembered how amazing it was. And my my uh, memory was absolutely correct. It's amazing. I want to point out, Scott taught me the game. And remember, we just did that show. We were talking about Will Wheaton and Tabletop, how even professionals like us will like mess up the rules to a I game. I got the tiniest thing wrong. It's a big deal. Scott it is kind of a big a deal when teaching me this game. So we played but it But otherwise, once. I was absolutely correct about all the other rules, and I didn't miss any other rules. Yep. However... You suck at this game. I don't suck. I, however... You, you cheat. I just beat you just now in that one round. You beat me in a one round by a few points. Meanwhile, in every other round and game of this, I have crushed you. The three we played in a row, what was my score? You like got, 280? I mean, there is an amount, a certain something? amount of luck in this game. Yeah, but I can't always be lucky. You can be lucky three out of four times. It's not Especially when you're the one shuffling. And so... Lost Cities is actually a really, really simple game. Right. So there is a deck of cards. In this deck of cards, there are five. It's really a card game. It's like it comes in a box with a board just to sort of increase the production value. It's just a deck of cards. But the deck of cards has the numbers 2 through 10 in five colors, right? Uh, Yellow, red, white, green, and blue. Yep. And it has in each color, there are also three handshake cards. I don't know what they're actually called. No one cares investments yeah the theme of the game is you're going on expeditions and you can go adventure into the unknown for the daring and adventurous there are many lost cities to find and explore yeah there are five different lost cities to search for the red one the yellow one the green one the blue one Uh, scott you're missing the great flavor of this game no one gives a shit the search can take you to the himalaya the The brazilian rainforest the green the ever-shifting sands of the desert the yellow. Ancient volcanoes. The red. And to Neptune's realm. The blue. <laughs> yeah. So basically, you can you play cards in the different expeditions, and for an expedition to pay out and give you points, you have to play enough cards for that expedition to get to the successful point, right? If you don't if you start playing cards in an expedition, but you don't play enough to make it successful. You lose a bunch of points because you like went out and geared up and went to Neptune's realm and you didn't really find anything there and you just went your ass back home and you just wasted a bunch of money. So you lose points. The if you don't even try, you don't play any cards of a certain color, then it's just a zero. So but yeah, so basically think of it this way: the game is all about risk management, uh, risk aversion. And reading the other player and their discards and managing the deck timer. Right. Because basically what you do is you draw a card, play a card. Well, you play a card, draw a card, actually. That's the worst part. Yeah, so you got to play. It's like a battle line. You got to play something. Got to play something. And your only option is either to discard on the top of a color in the middle, and then the other person on their turn could choose to draw that as their draw. Yeah. Or play it in one of the piles, and now you're locked in. That pile's gonna score. If you ignore a color completely, it never scores. But if you put even one card down there, you could get up to negative 60 points. That's a lot of negative points. Yeah, it is. If you play the wrong things, yeah. So, and the other thing is, so let's say you play down, you know, a hand. handshakes have to come first. If you play one handshake in a column... That doubles the score. Even if it's a negative score, it'll be negative doubled. So if you just play one handshake, that score is negative 20, negative 40, right? Yep. But you have to play the handshake first. Before you play anything else. So like if you play the number three and then you draw a handshake, the handshake's useless if it's the same color. So here are the actual rules. The game is really simple. You have like a hand of eight. Both of you have a hand of eight. The oldest player goes first, so I always go first, I guess. Older by like two months and change. Yep, but older nonetheless. Mm-hmm. The rule is the rules are very explicit. We're not gonna mess up the rules. <laughs> and on your turn, you either play a card onto one of the colors, or you discard a card into the middle on one of the colors, covering up any cards that are already discarded. Then you draw a card, either from those discards or from the top of the deck. Mm. 
and play continues until someone draws the last card in the deck, meaning every card has been drawn. You then immediately score. And before you do all of this, you agree how many rounds you're going to play. The game says three is a good number. Yeah, I mean, the reason you play rounds is because while the game isn't, you know, super luck-based, I mean, it's still got some luck involved, right? You could theoretically get some awful draw that's, like, unplayable, and you end up with no score, even though you played as well as you possibly could. So you mitigate that by playing a few rounds, and then all the luck is washed out in, you know, the the multi-round play, and you see who's really better at the game. Now, that's pretty straightforward, but as Scott said when he was teaching it to me, then there's Kinesia Twist. Because remember, this is Rainer Kinesia. You know, Amon Ray, Battle Line, Ra. Uh, Tigris and Euphrates. Yep, Through the Desert, Modern Art. There's always a Kinesia Twist. The twist is, for each color... The score you get is one, like Scott said, multiplied by two. Well, it's multiplied by one plus the number of handshakes you've played. Mm -hmm. And before you multiply or add your score together, you subtract 20 from the total face value of all the cards sum. So if I play a, a four, five, and a 10, that's 19. So that's a negative one on that row. And if you get if you had three handshakes, that's four times negative one, so negative four. That's bad. Yep. And think about it, it's really hard to get to twenty when you've got in the deck cards numbered two through ten, and that's it. One of each. Oh, and, and did the I other, mention you and have the, to play the cards on their correct color, of course. And you must always raise the value of your pile. You must always play a higher card than any previous card you've played. Right, so you play the two, and then you play the five. You can never play the three or the four ever. There's no way to pick up that five. Or And that's when Rim immediately discards the three and four he's been holding on to. But now I, you can't draw them. Right, so it's like, on the one hand, you know, I could try to hold out to get the three and four. Maybe they're in the deck. I don't know Rim has them. But if I assume he has them, even if I say, well, he has them, there's no point in holding out for them because I won't get them. I'll just play my five. That now frees his hand up, and he can now finally discard them. If I had maybe held out longer, he might have been forced to discard them just to do something and give me a play. There is one other rule, and this is the rule that Scott forgot. If you play eight or more cards in a pile, then after you do all the scoring, you get 20 additional points. Right, so you can play, you know, if, if it might be hard to get over 20 if you don't get the big cards, like someone might be holding them out on you. I think if you play eight cards, you're guaranteed to be above 20, making it moot. Yeah, you're, it's, it, well, you could. Two, three, four, what, Scott, what's two plus three plus four well, plus three five hand, plus six plus it would seven have plus to eight be, plus, all right, handshake. Three handshakes, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. That's 11. Yep. Yeah, you're going to get positive points. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be that it won't be a lot though but no. it'll, it'll be still a great play so with all this combined like the rule makes it very the rules make it very clear and again this is actually an example of really well-written rules like you just read these things they're beautiful uh your expedition each one could be worth anywhere between negative 80 and 156 there you go that's a big swing that's yeah, a negative 80 swing. is three handshakes and nothing else and 156 is you play all the cards in order perfectly in the whole set. Yep. So we've played this game a bunch. I'm pretty much the god wizard of this game, at least for now. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting, the interplay. Like, one thing I've noticed that I started trying right away, is it seems like a pretty powerful strategy, is if I think Scott's not going after a color, I'll start banking cards by discarding them. Because, you know, the round ends when the last card is drawn. So I can bank cards into the middle and draw new cards by discarding if I'm confident Scott will not draw those cards from the discard and use them. Then later, if I get cards of that color, no, and, and that's actually more likely because Scott's not investing in that color, then I can just redraw those as my draws and have guaranteed points. Well, a good way to stop this strategy if your opponent is using it is, oh, I see that he has begun redrawing the cards he previously discarded to sort of make a huge play in that color. Let Yoink, me, there goes the six. Let me take one of the cards from that perfectly open discard pile so now that they cannot use it. Oh, they're still. I'll take another one from there. Just hold it in my hand where they can't get it. Yes, thank you. Yep. But you could twist that one step further and use that as a stalling tactic to get the other person to not finish a bigger pile of something. Mm. There's a Because it's a two-player symmetric game, there is a huge amount 
of card counting, reading the other players' plays, bluffing, uh, all that stuff combined. Uh, you can take really big risks. Sometimes you get fucked by those risks. Yeah, it's like you could just, like, a lot of times you'll start a hand, and in your hand you'll see something like white handshake, white two, white ten. And you're like, all right. This is going to happen, right? I'm going I for mean, that long inside straight. I mean, I'm going to get, I just need like one more, one or two white cards in the whole, this is a turn one, right? There are, I know for a fact, a lot of white cards left in the deck. Yep. And, the, and all and, I need to do is see pretty much any two of them. And this will be a positive play. And I can just make easy plays at the start of the game. I can just go white handshake, white two. So, of course, what happens is you play white handshake. And then Rim goes three, four, six, seven, eight. And it's like, it was turn <laughs> one. How could you possibly know? <laughs> but it's like, that was a somewhat reasonable risk to take. And you know what? If you they you didn't just get that horrible luck of, yeah, Rim had every white card in his hand. You just didn't know it. Yeah, heading into the Himalayas is a horrible risk to take. Then... You would have had, you know, you could have drawn, like, it was possible that the deck was shuffled in such a way that every other card was white, and you would have just kept drawing white cards and playing them, and played them all in order. Some majestic, perfect luck, right? It can happen. There is luck. But you shuffle in the cards. I mean, you can't, you can only blame it on luck three out of four times like I can. <laughs> so this is basically, like, one of the best two-player tabletop games I've ever seen. So... If you need two-player tabletop games... Which everyone does. Get this and Battle Line, because they're both great and they're both Kinesia. And I guess Oshi? Sure. Can you name another good two-player game? We played a lot of bad two-player games. <laughs> Hellas. All, all the other ones ever? Yeah. Netrunner's a good two-player game. Netrunner is a good two-player game. Yeah. Yeah? Not that many. Yeah. Lost Cities. Go find out what treasure is lying in them. All right. And on that note... We will see you at Kineticon, because we got shit to do before the con. Yeah, I got a lot to do. I can't sit around. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Kat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. 